Of all modern media, Fox News plays one of the largest roles in politics, really over the years. You got controversial anchors of the past like Bill O'Reilly, powerful enough to net presidential interviews before he was fired over sexual harassment allegations. Then there's the political partisans like Sean Hannity, who campaigned for Trump, outing himself as an operative, not an independent member of the press. Or Fox's most watched figure today, Tucker Carlson, who pushes racial conspiracy theories that are more extreme than what was even on Fox five years ago. Well, they all have one thing in common, the backing of the powerful right-wing billionaire Rupert Murdoch, who oversees a business empire with his own children jockeying to take over, which is part of the inspiration for the hit HBO show Succession, depicting a stubborn, aging billionaire who owns a powerful right-wing cable channel and whose children jockey to take over. It's a storyline about and against the 1%, their odd lives and amoral habits amidst rising U.S. inequality. And it's a hit, a smash hit, according to the critics, the best show you'll ever experience, say some. And Americans agree, powering it to huge viewership on HBO, as people may root for and against the aging mogul who's often in battle and surrounded. I am surrounded by snakes and f morons. He did not fire me. He said it was just going to take a little longer. What I think he meant to say was that he wished that mom gave birth to a can opener because at least then it would be useful. I'm not saying I would make a better CEO. That's unsaid. It's not unsaid when you say it. You're the number one trending topic ahead of tater tots and the Pope followed you. Uh -oh. Wow. The government does have an unbelievable amount of leverage at its disposal, Dad. The law. Yeah, the law. The law is people. And people is politics. And I can handle the people. Like Murdoch, this Logan Roy character is hyper vigilant about wielding his power. The last exchange shows him rebuffing the traditional advice about yielding to a legal boundary. He thinks he has enough power and people at his disposal to move the boundary. It seems to work until it doesn't, as the feds crack down on his company for corrupt practices and grave misconduct against women, an ethical business and legal crisis that vaunts forward the mogul's longtime lawyer and protector, the general counsel named Jerry Kelman, one of the highest ranking women in this company who becomes acting CEO during the crisis, navigating misogyny, misogyny in politics. She often seems like one of the most cogent, level-headed characters, even likable, until you remember that she, too, is deploying all her skill to protect and to perpetuate business as usual. We are in a proxy war. The plane has just been hijacked. All the engines have fallen into the sea, and the pilot's hair is on fire. I can't actually, in this nation, yet, uh, sadly, halt the publication of a book. I'm not kidding myself about anything. I need family support, so I'm very open to cooperation and input. Right. And you have good instincts. Thank you. You also have horrible instincts. Jerry is fascinating. She channels a kind of technocratically craven, relentlessly effective figure in the peculiar legal and business climate of multinational late-stage capitalism, where nothing is sacred, everything has a price, and surviving the rat race is deemed better than getting eaten by the rats. We are joined now, making her beat debut. The actor who plays Jerry, Jay Cameron, joins us now. Welcome to The Beat. Thank you. It's nice to be here. What do you see in your character? How do you relate to her? How do I relate to Jerry? Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, I guess that show business also is a place where there's ruthless misogyny and a lot of struggling to um, keep your toehold and... Um, but I think actually women in all businesses relate to that. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, then, then for beyond that, I think there's a lot of things about Jerry that are really satisfying to play. I don't know that I relate to it so much, but it's wonderful to awful as all these characters are. It's wonderful to play a woman who's so canny and is such an expert at dodging, you know, staying out of the line of fire and is so clever at, um, her craftiness. That's sort of satisfying. She's surrounded in the, in the story by voluble people. How is she so effective uh, without using that same 
approach all the time and how do you get into get into that as a character and imagining someone maneuvering that way well i mean um i guess i would have to say that she's someone who um very carefully is studying the score at every second and knows exactly uh how she fits in and what is needed of her and she's very um her she's very clever about managing logan who's the sort of loosely based on Rupert Mur Murdoch, although they say not really, but it's pretty, pretty clear comparisons. Yeah. Um, so I think that she's, uh, she makes up in craftiness what she does in volume or uh, in power. She's kind of, mm. you know, clever at getting her way. Uh, you reminded me of the Beastie Boys. She's crafty. She's always down. Uh, she's a very crafty <laughs> character. And I want to play a little bit more because... In journalism and any responsible field that's factual, there are sometimes things that seem to be true, but until you prove them, you can't just go out saying them. Uh, this show is not burdened with that, and it depicts government, law, politics on the take in a way that I think is largely a concern of people in the real world. Let's look at a scene where we see how a big company has direct access to the president and his advisors, which changes the game. Here we go. So, off the record, um, what's the temperature at Maine Justice? Any danger of them or Southern District going Batman on this? Um, the Attorney General is very smart. It's just the Deputy AG likes to think she's something of a straight shooter. Marilyn's prickly, so that's your only issue. Marilyn. Well, maybe you should just fire her. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. How did you study or learn about giving that some, some reality, some vigor, uh, in, a, in an environment where we're told, both administrations, by the way, both parties would deny this kind of stuff goes on, and yet every so often we get the clues that it does? Well, I mean, I don't, I don't, know, that I, I don't know that I can prove that that happens, but the writing is so clever, and it's just what you imagine if you follow the if you follow politics, you follow the news, you kind of imagine the deals that are being made and the um, friendships that are being courted and and how things happen. I've been reading um, Robert Caro's Master of the Senate, which is all about LBJ's incredible um, incredible politicking that he did to pass the Civil Rights Act, and uh, it's just amazing, and it's very much like our show, like hmm. the incredible you know behind the scenes um you know he was one person went to some people and a completely other figure to other people you know never not a man for all seasons at all not all seasons certainly not and robert caro is is brilliant you talk about the type of writing that brilliant. brings you into a room you wouldn't otherwise be in um we also saw that this character you play was originally written in a casting decision where they imagined or planned it to be a male character uh, tell us about that and, and how, if, if at all, that affects the way you play it. Um, well, they, yes, they'd written it originally, I think, as a man, and it was spelled J-E-R-R-Y, not G-E-R-R-I. Um, and then I think they had the idea they would see some women for the role, and I was one of those. And um, they, I, I think what happened is they didn't have time to rewrite the audition script with a woman in mind. So... The scene had all this, you know, kind of vulgar stuff that Kendall and Roman was saying to the Jerry character that was just locker room talk that was just glancing off the Jerry character with no trouble. And for me, being a woman, I had to figure out how to play that. So I, hmm. I tried to be unflappable, but also I was just wincing and rolling my eyes and, you know, disgusted too. And I think that became a fun characteristic that got revisited and revisited. Um, I'd love to do a lightning round with you. This is, uh, you know, in a word or a sentence answers. Your favorite character actor to play off of? Roman. Which, which character would you have the hardest time dealing with in real life? Kendall. The succession fan or viewer that you've met that struck you most uh, because they love the show or they're famous or for whatever reason? Um, Steven Spielberg. Final two questions. One, was that Logan calling? In which case we understand if you need to take it. 
And two, you know who it probably was. <laughs> and two, <laughs> final question: Who will take over the company? Well, we know who should take over the company, <laughs> but I don't know. And if I did know, I couldn't say. So, um, I don't know. I mean, I think that uh, I have a feeling it's something we haven't thought of yet. But I don't know why I say that. Okay. I think because the. The play is is considered. I mean, the um, the show is often spoken about like it's Shakespearean, and often big Shakespeare dramas end with someone coming in out of left field and and uh, taking the crown at the end. So that's all I base it on, which is nothing. Or my kingdom, and, uh, Jesse my kingdom never tells for me a horse, anything. So you know. know. Yeah. Uh, J. Cameron Smith, thank you so much. My pleasure.